Dear friends, many of you are aware that J.R.R. Martin has already spent around 10 million years on his last book in the series. Naturally, many fans are wondering what the hell has he been doing all this time? Well, now I have found the answer. It turns out that J.R.R. Martin devoted himself to expanding the ending of The Lord of the Rings. Yes, yes. As you may know, he expressed his disapproval of how Tolkien wrapped up his novel. So I have been defeated, Aragorn is king, and Tolkien just says that he, he ruled wisely and well for 500 years or whatever. What does that constitute? What was his tax policy? How did the economy function? Did he encourage trade? Did he discourage it? We never get answers to any of these questions. We just get, he rules wisely and well. So he took it upon himself to fix that. We have obtained a unique version from his agent. And now I am gonna read you a few excerpts. Peace and serenity descended on the lands of Middle-earth. So much so, that even when down in Hobbiton some brandybuck happened to bicker with a tuck on what shall be a fair price for an ounce of old Toby, they always ended up sharing a pipe. And when two Gondorian royal guards argued about who was the one among them that Lady Arvin had graced with a glance, each tried to convince the other it was the other and not himself who was so honored. Far and wide had spread the fame of Aragorn the Wise. Every living soul in Middle-earth, from the last eternal still wandering among the fading forest of Lothlorien, to the rare shadow spawn still befouling the earth with its presence, all envied the glorious taxation system Aragorn had introduced, with its kingly deductions stubbering over that of old times as sons of Númenor over common folk, or common folk over halflings, or as a malorn tree in full bloom over a simple oak. The mighty rulers of Valinor themselves were set to envy the eagle assistant filing system that Aragorn had established with the help of his old friend why here the Windlord? And when, rare as it were, a weakened hydra of shadow were to rear its ugly head, sending a mob of goblins to burn the crops, or a ruthless hail cloud from Caradras to ruin a roof of an honest Gandorian, no more than a frown had crossed the honest man's face, for all he had to do was reach in a drawer with state-provided blanks and send the nearest eagle with a request. In no more than a fortnight, he knew, would an express priority eagle bring a hefty compensation in gold coins minted in His Majesty's royal palace, bearing his wise profile and equipped with double-layer elven magic anti-forgery protection. Peaceful and safe were the dreams of those who heeded King's advice and paid the modest income-adjusted premium for His Majesty's Universal Insurance Program, an enterprise backed by the King's personal treasury and having the mighty dwarven lords of Gloin's lineage on the board of trustees. So kind and forgiving was the King that his company covered the expenses for everyone caught in the terrible undoing flood of 1285, even though floods were not covered under the standard contract. Mighty and glorious are the two towers you oversee, my lord, said the fair Lady Arvin to the king as they stood under a blooming white tree, breathing the mellow evening air of June, fragrant and full of blossoming life. Strong and sturdy is their masonry, rising to the welcoming heavens, Lady Arvin went on, running her fair fingers along Aragorn's back. Aluninonj at Elantalunen, he murmured. Tell me, my king, if a heavy rain cloud that had gathered its waters in the fair land of Rivendell were to approach your fastnesses, would they not pierce it? Would they not help it release its waters by offering their girthy strength, pulsing with Numenorian blood? <clears throat> Sorry, we'll have to stop here. So, yeah. Then we have a sex scene between Aragorn and Arwen, and another between Faramir and Eowyn, then Sam and his wife, uh, Frodo joins in the middle. <clears throat> what else do we have here? Oh yes, Legolas and Gimli 
after a titanic style scene on the ship to Arnor, and the most impressive one, Gandalf and Treebeard with shadow facts and some unnamed mare in the background. Well, that's pretty much it. Although, wait, <clears throat> a note for future movie adaptations. Okay, a little hiccup here in the end. Aragorn goes insane, kills all Rohirrim, and then gets dethroned and beheaded by his own people. The end. <laughs>